Hey, everybody. My name is Jennifer. This is Metatron is speaking. We're going to be talking about Elysium today, um, which if you're not familiar with Elysium, it is the like realm of the gods. It is the spiritual space um, that all god energies reside in. They never, um, none of the gods like incarnated in order to be a god. They're always just energy. So Elysium is where they reside. It can be called many things. Elysium is like the Greek terminology for uh, like heaven or the place that heroes go when they die. So let's talk about bilocation and Elysium. I actually don't have my notes up where I need to be. So let me scroll through. And I may have been overambitious thinking that I could just land on the right spot with no problem. I was overambitious. Okay, so while I scroll through this, let me actually just give you an update. Because I know last month I told you about um, how in November it was a really great month to invest in new projects. And I was feeling super ambitious and I was like, going to start a Patreon going to start TikTok, um, going to have a new service for the website, and I'm going to write the first chapter of one of my books. So super ambitious for like a 30-day period plus, you know, clients and channeling and videos and medium and everything else that's going on. Um, so obviously we set up a Patreon group. It's amazing. Um, it's kind of growing into what it's going to be right now is what I would say. But it can just, with all the energies that keep coming in to share messages and share magical things with the group, I just feel like this is going to go in a really awesome direction. Um, it's really turning out to be a group for people who are not only interested in having um, community, with other light workers, but also a group of people who are interested in taking a active role in their in their journey, in their experience, in their exploration of what it means to be a light worker. So, anyways, so the Patreon group that worked out. <laughs> um, I did start TikTok. I didn't put very many. Um, videos up it has been like a real personal struggle for me and I've still just pushed through it and done it anyways and now I'm kind of getting to the point where I'm like Metatron I don't know like I don't know I might I'm not enjoying this and so you know I'm constantly coaching people if you aren't enjoying it like what are you doing like don't waste your time doing that and so I might be cutting ties with that soon not sure We'll see how it goes. I did actually just record a video for it, so I guess I'm not ready to cut ties for it yet, but I need it to become fun. If I can't find a way to do that, then I'm going to need to get rid of it. Um, let's see what else. The new service that we were supposed to add to the website, that particular service has not yet been added. We're still uh, working on it, not because of the service, but because it's actually um, involves a... Uh, contract with another individual so we're going to need to my cats are fighting over who gets to sit in my lap right now <laughs> um it involves a contract so uh, there's some legalities there that are holding us back from doing it quicker but we did put um all kinds of new services on the website during november um and I can't even name any of them for you right now. But we have a, we've for sure done the raw activation, Odin activation. Um, we have like three or four more activations coming down the line shortly as well. Um, for my book, while I continue to channel information that most certainly belongs in that book, I have yet to like sit down and be like, okay, this is the formatting. This is how it's going to, I haven't done that yet. So I dropped the ball there. I'm still going to do it. It's just, I, this, this was a lesson for me in over, overextending myself, overcommitting. It's good to have big goals, but 
you know, I'm kind of disappointed actually that I didn't get through all of it because I work so hard nonstop at this stuff that I really wanted to complete it all. But I think it was more about um, just learning that it's okay to have a big goal, shoot for it, go for it. And if you can't get it all done, it's not the end of the world. You just keep going. You just keep chugging along and things happen all the same. Um, okay, so back to the video. So this video was, I mean, the way this channeling came through was so bizarre, even for me. <laughs> so um, somebody tilted my head upwards, which is only Ra. Ra's the only one who does that, right? It wasn't Ra this time. So my head tilts upwards. Someone kisses me on the mouth. It's not Ra. I can tell it's not Ra. I can tell that it's not... Um, it's not like romantic energy. It's just like um, to get my attention. And I'm just like, and then the craziest thing happened. Out of my mouth, I said, Hermes? Which is like, what the heck just happened? Like, what? <laughs> I've never talked to him in my life. What is happening? And then so Hermes is just like, hello. Like he just comes in all like energy and happiness. And I'm just like, you must have a message for me because the only thing I know about the guy, okay, I know two things. He's got some like golden shoes with some wings on it and kind of floats and um, gives messages. Like that's the only thing I know about this guy. I know nothing else. And so I asked him if he had a message for me and he said, I do from Cerberus. He misses you. Why haven't you come to pet him? So Cerberus, the only thing I know about Cerberus is that he's a three-headed dog. I want to say he guards like the gates of hell or something to that effect, although there's no such thing as gates of hell. So this is the myth about him. Um, at any rate, I just had some guide I've never talked to before kiss me on the mouth and ask me why I haven't gone and talked to Cerberus, who I know nothing about, and pet him. And I, I like look over at Metatron and I'm like, should I stop? Like, do you want me to continue channeling this? Like, this is bizarre. And he's like, yeah, yeah, just go, go, go. I'm like, all right. So Cerberus, I go and I'm like, okay, take me to Cerberus. He takes me to Cerberus. Cerberus is like a black three-headed dog. He's like the size of like a large dog, right? He's not like in the... I'm sorry, all I have to go off of is like cartoon references because I literally don't watch movies or TV or anything. Um, so in like cartoons, Cerberus is like, I don't know, 300 feet tall or something. He was just the size of a dog. And so I was like wrapping my arms around one of the necks and like, you know, hugging on him. And he was just acting like a dog. He was just very excited to see me. And... um he was like whining and vocalizing his excitement the way dogs do. And then I looked at myself and I see that I'm a goddess. And I have like flowing white robes that are on fire with pink flames. This is really hard to explain, but and I wish so badly I could show this to you guys because it looks way cooler in my vision than my words can give you. But um, yeah, that's the best I could explain it is that the clothing, it's like it flows backwards. And at the end of the clothing, it's almost like there are flames that are constantly in like slow motion is the best way I can describe it. So I'm wearing white. I have these pink flames that come off the edges of my clothing. I am back in Elysium is what I say, which means, okay, I'm, pr so the, I say I'm back because there was another recent vision I had where I went there, but I didn't give that to you guys first. You'll still hear about it, but just later. Um, so I say I'm back in Elysium. This is why they showed me what they did. They wanted to bring me back here. The sky is pink and orange here. It's like a perpetual sunset. I see lime 
green flames on a young man wearing white. He is young with curly brown hair. He has like this small wreath, really thin small wreath around his head, the way Greek gods do. And I recognize him because he looks like really similar to my shoulder angel, my um, <laughs> my my guardian angel, Feywanel, my my angel that keeps my body alive. He looks just like him. And um, yeah, so he's wearing, except he's wearing Greek god attire in this vision. When I look at him, he's actually dressed like a Roman soldier. But you guys, I don't know if I ever told you guys that he never actually. I mean, sometimes, a lot of times I'll look at him and he has like wings and stuff, but normally he looks like a Roman soldier. Um, so I see him and I like adore him. So I like run up to him and like hug him. And, um, and I'm just like holding on to him. And I'm pretty sure he could hear my thoughts of like, this is where I always want to be. Like, I don't want to like, this is where I want to be. This is my heaven. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. And so he, like, whispers in my ear that I'm always there with him. Metatron is doing this to teach me how to bilocate at will. It's just a matter of tuning into where I already am. He's showing me somewhere I really want to be in order to motivate me to learn to do this. Um, so, but I mean, it's, so it's just very literal what they're showing me there. He's like, I'm like, oh, I love being here. And he's like, you are here. You are here. You are always here. Yes, you're on earth right now, but part of you, and it's not, it's, it's hard to explain it and have it really have the full impact because we use these phrases in the English language <laughs> where it's like a part of you is always there, but it's like, literally I am, <laughs> I actually am always there. Um, so I was like, it was interesting because I was crying in my vision with Feywana and I was crying in my body on earth. And it's, the reason I was crying is because um, Faye Wanell and I are like partnered a lot of the time. And so he's given off all this like love energy and um, it's like healing trauma for me. So then he like backs off <laughs> to like, so I'll stop crying and we're communicating telepathically and we are still hugging each other, but he's just backed off his energy. And so I tell him that I want his love energy back, but he gives me the knowing that there is something else he needs to do instead. So he's very calm and like in control and gentle. And he like lowers his forehead, touches his forehead to mine. And I, I get a vision within my vision. It's hard to explain as well get a vision when he touches his forehead to me and I see rocks falling from another planet I get and I can see it's like destructive and so I pull away from him because I get scared and um and then I'm like okay 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 I need to do this like whatever it is I need to just look at it so I like took a deep breath and I went back to touching his forehead and I see that the planet is Gana which is the first planet ever made there's an earthquake there it's shaking the rocks i'm in the desert there there's a desert there that has pink rocks and pink sand it's the prophecy rock formation that is broken open these rocks glow green with power i'm told that lithium is what gives the stone its power love and magic so in that lifetime, I'm elven, and I look over, and I see Feywanel as an elven man, and I'm freaking out because I'm like, I didn't know we had a lifetime here together. And so I'm hugging him again, and he's telling me that everything, there gave me a lot of energy with this, 
everything I call a past lifetime is occurring right now. He says I am there on Gana with him now. So then I'm like, well, what about all my bad lifetimes? What about all my traumas? Like, am I there living that right now too? And so he's he's still he's talking to me in ideas. And so I have to like translate them for you guys. But he shows me that what I choose. <sighs> I wrote this funny. Hopefully this will make sense. He shows me that what I choose to vibrate at the same frequency of. I made that sound really complicated. What I choose to. The, I hope you guys understand this. I don't know if I can rephrase it. So what I choose to vibrate at the same frequency of in this lifetime. Will magnify or unravel past and future events. So if I meet someone in this lifetime, this lifetime, and I love them strongly, and I connect my energy to theirs, it's like a relationship or a friendship, and let's say it's unhealthy, let's say it's an unhealthy dynamic, then it will magnify this energy throughout all our past and future experiences together and thus change the past and the future perpetuating that unhealthy energy if i then evolve and grow and heal my relationship with that person then that new energy of love will be amplified into all our relationships in the past and the future, changing both and perpetuating that new dynamic. This is why healing trauma changes the past and the future. This is why your choices and your frequency and your behaviors in this lifetime matter because you are projecting out energy everywhere to other galaxies, to other realms. What you do and choose affects all existences because you are part of all of them. You are already there. You've always been there and you always will be there. Listen to what I'm saying. No one else channeling is going to tell you that you're all that you are everywhere and that you're always going to be everywhere. Let's talk about this. When people talk about not wanting to incarnate again, they are confused. You have to incarnate again because to exist anywhere, you must exist everywhere. If I want to stay in Elysium with Fei Wan El, I have to keep taking lifetimes on Gana and Earth and everywhere else. If I want to still be an angel in heaven with God, I have to keep incarnating. You cannot be in one place and not the other. Ra shows me that if we stop incarnating in a particular place, it will cease to exist. If we stopped incarnating on Earth, it would get erased from the timeline, from existence. The point of reincarnating and healing karma and trauma is not to stop incarnating. It is to change the past and the future and the present and turn everywhere into a place that we want to incarnate on. Our energies perpetuate what we experience everywhere we go. We create this experience and we allow places to continue to exist by being here. 
Now I understand why they say everything is connected. We create the energies we experience. You can change those energies with your awareness and with conscious choices. Consciousness is the game changer. This isn't about some lofty idea about you improving yourself. Consciousness is your power. It allows you to control and change your experience and your environment. Consciousness is magic. And your consciousness or your energy is woven into everywhere. So as you change yourself in one place, you change yourself in all the places you are. And that changes the environment. And that changes the others who live in that environment. Do you see all these ripples? Do you see the massive impact each one of us has? We are creating huge impacts everywhere, good and bad, whether we are aware of ourselves or not. Why not choose to be aware and have fun with this and influence creation and build what you want to experience? So that was, that's the end of this message, but that, I mean, this is a bit of a bombshell. You can't stop incarnating unless you want to cease to exist. And that's actually not even an option because matter can't be created or destroyed. It can only be changed. I, I mean, I don't... I don't understand all this. I don't know that a human being can even begin to understand all of this. But they're basically telling us, you know, you keep wanting to like live this really positive life and fix your karma so you can like get the heck out of here and never have to return, but that's not that's not how this works at all. You're not trying to get off the karma wheel. You're trying to build paradise everywhere you go. Because you are everywhere, and so why wouldn't you want to be living somewhere harmonious? So, big message. It's okay if you don't agree with all of it. It's okay if it doesn't resonate with you entirely. Whatever little bits and pieces feel right to you, keep those. Something doesn't feel right to you, just push it away. Should be the same way for any message that I give you, any message that any channeler gives you. Take the pieces that feel right and the stuff that doesn't feel right. It's just, it's not meant for you or it's not meant for you at this time. And that's fine. We can only absorb the things that are at our, at our frequency that kind of meet us where we are in our journey, you know? So, all right. That is my message. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.